Okay. So let's move on to the next piece of armor that he talks about. So shield of faith. And then uh, he also talks about the helmet of salvation. Okay. So let's uh, let me just share. Okay. So helmet of salvation. Okay. So, so when we say salvation, we're talking about uh, the Lord uh, uh, saving work, redeeming work on the cross, and how it um, affected us as believers, and um, so the knowledge of that, right? The understanding of that, the knowledge of that, um, uh, is is a is a protective piece of armor. Okay. So it's um, it's something for every believer to be strong in the knowledge of salvation. Uh, how did I get saved? I know what Christ did for us. What Christ, knowing what Christ did for me on the cross, and how I am saved, and what I am saved from, right, is is a very important revelation. Right. And that's why right in the first semester, you know, we we look at uh, who we are in Christ and, uh, you know, that that whole topic of what we have become in Christ is a very important thing. It's very a fundamental and foundational thing for every believer, right? Because, uh, because the enemy can, again, uh, you know, in the spiritual battle, uh, if it's... Uh, yeah, if if we are not strong in that, the enemy can actually sow doubt, sow unbelief, um, you know, put all that like a seed in our mind, in our thoughts, thinking, okay, you know, you're you're not born again. Look at your life, you know, you you look at the way you're living, look at the way you're doing things and uh, and not doing certain things, and so it might bring us to a place of saying, okay, maybe it was it was just a you know some resolution just like a new year resolution something that i made and and um, maybe so nothing will come out of it you know um, but we need to be strong in that we need to be strong in the fact that we are saved what has happened to us right and and walk in the uh, or live our lives daily uh, according to the benefits of what we have received okay the the, the fact that we are justified, the fact that we are sanctified, that we are friends with God. And uh, because we are born again, we have the ability to hear the voice of the shepherd. And uh, and we have the Holy Spirit residing in us. All those, you know, the wonderful things uh, that has happened to us. Now, that understanding of salvation uh, needs to be strong. You know, we need to, we need to in a, in a way, we need to be comfortable or rest in it. Right. Oh, this is who I am. This is what I've become. And in another sense, lay hold of it you know, with a very strong, firm grip. Okay, So both we need to do so that we don't lose that. Right? So the enemy brings in uh, like a, maybe, a, you know, like a lie, like some kind of a thought, some kind of a, um, you know, some kind of an imagination, even uh, challenging that very thing in our minds, in our thinking, right? But um, this keeps us strong. This keeps us going. Uh, much like how the, you know, if if a sword or if an axe of a soldier, you know, it comes and hits you know, when we are not looking, when we are not watching, it just comes and you know, maybe touches the the skull. Um, but because of the helmet, because of the you know the strong helmet which is covering the head and the face, um, we escape. the uh, The actual effect, which was actually intended, was to kill. But then we escape that. Okay, so this understanding or revelation of salvation is like a helmet. Right, it protects. The mind it protects us in the battlefield. Okay, then so what does he say? He says above all, sorry, verse seventeen, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now the sword of the spirit, and uh, you know he Paul uses that specific word that he uses for the sword. Talks about a long sword. It's not uh, you know a small one, but it's uh, uh, it was a uh, double-edged sword. Okay, so it is used as a as a weapon, 
and it's sharp and uh, it had a pointed end and so on. So um, he uses uh, this uh, Greek word in order to describe the sword. Okay, so it's um, it says which is the word of God, which is the and the word used there is rhema. Okay, not logos, but rhema, the quickened word, the word that the Holy Spirit has, you know, has brought into our hearts. Okay, uh, which the Holy Spirit has highlighted. Okay, that's the quickened word of God. Now, this quickened word of God is like the two-edged sword, sharp two-edged sword. Uh, maybe it's a, it's an understanding of scriptures. Maybe it's a verse itself. Uh, maybe it's a strategy. Maybe it's a prophetic word. Maybe it's a, you know, a prompting of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's the sword of the Spirit. It's it's a weapon. It's a weapon against the doubt of the enemy. It's a weapon against the you know whatever the enemy brings in the challenges uh, of of the enemy. Okay, so so it also means that it's a word that is quickened by the Holy Spirit, which we as believers we speak out in faith, and we speak out in faith without any unbelief. The word is spoken. The word is maybe even demonstrated and acted upon right so this word is what is the sword of the spirit right? it it fights or it is used against what the enemy brings statements of guilt and condemnation okay statements that are meant to discourage us uh, statements that are meant to you know keep us in prison of guilt or shame or condemnation um, statements that are you know uh, meant to cripple us so that we cannot do anything uh, questions that are meant to bring doubt in our ability as believers of God as ministers of God uh, questions that are meant to doubt our closeness with God relationship with God all these kinds of uh, thoughts or questions or statements that the enemy brings, we are able to counter that, come against that with the quickened word of God, the highlighted, quickened, uh, the stirred up word of God, and which is done by the Holy Spirit in our spirit. Okay. Then we come to verse 18. So many times we stop with verse 17 uh, when we talk about the armor, but verse 18 was also important because 18 talks about prayer. Right? Praying with all, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. Okay, so though this piece of armor. Uh, is not really mentioned, you know, he doesn't draw a parallel, but since he's talking about the pieces of armor of the Roman soldier, we can see that, okay, this is also another piece, um, which the, or another armor, which the Roman soldier carries, which is the spear, which is the lance, you know, which is something that can be thrown at the enemy. Now, he's talking about prayer, and uh, he's talking about uh, you know, something that makes a difference even from a distance, right? A, a weapon that makes a difference, even if it's if you're not there, just physically close, you know, you, fr even from a distance, right? This, the spear was always uh, thrown from a distance and uh, the enemy, when the enemy is there at a distance. So uh, the parallel is that prayer, okay? Similarly, prayer, prayer and supplication in the spirit. And being watchful with perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So, uh, praying with perseverance. Okay, meaning perseverance, meaning you you keep at it, you keep going. You know, no matter what, you don't stop praying with perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Okay, and uh, so he's talking about prayer and supplication in the spirit and praying. Always, right? Which means all seasons, all times, and the only way we can do that is when we 
when we pray in tongues, when we pray in the spirit. So the importance of praying in the spirit, right? Um, empowered by the spirit of God, led by the spirit of God, um, with all perseverance, <clears throat> uh, with endurance, um, not stopping, right? Uh, but keeping at it, ongoing prayer. And uh, so he, he also talks about praying for others, praying for oneself, uh, praying for, you know, when, when we are in spiritual conflict and otherwise, but praying also for others, right? So, um, so the question is, you know, do we, if we are in spiritual conflict, when we are in spiritual conflict, uh, to, to walk intentionally with all this, right? To walk in truth, to walk in faith, to have the understanding and revelation of the of our salvation to walk with the readiness to share the gospel the gospel of peace right? to have the breastplate of righteousness that that is again a revelation and understanding of the kind of righteousness that has been that we are covered with right and to walk in uh, with with the sword of the spirit, taking the shield of faith and the sword of the uh, spirit. So these are things that we are as believers we are asked to walk in, uh, and you know in uh, something that we can do corporately, something that we can do individually as well. Right, corporately, the soldiers used to you know have a like walk together as a wall. You know, with all their shields up in formation, you know, some will hold their shields on top so the arrows don't hit, and then some are holding it to the side so the arrows don't come from this side. Uh, uh, so it's like uh, protective. The soldiers are walking in formation. So as a corporate body, you know, as believers, maybe as a church, as a, you know, as a ministry, as a small team, whatever, you know, we can walk in corporate prayer. And that is a protection. Okay, so um, so that is added protection, right? When we when we pray for one another, when we move together in prayer. So um, so when we do that, it's added protection and complete protection for the army of God, right? Then verse nineteen says, "Pray for me that utterance may be given to me, that may op that I may open my mouth and speak boldly." Uh, uh, to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So that's verse 19 and 20. Okay. So saying that uh, that utterance may be given, just pray for me, you know, intercede for me while we are on the topic of prayer. He's saying, you know, pray for me that utterance may be given, that I may be given that uh, the message to uh, share and uh, speech or um, the message uh, that I may be able to speak speak that out and I may be able to speak that out boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel okay to make known the uh, uh, the mystery of the gospel the secrets of the gospel the things that are uh, revealed and uh, which I need to reveal to others, right? So I may make known this revelation to others. And, uh, and then he says, for which I am an ambassador in prison or in chains you know, in, in prison. So saying, this is who I am. Uh, you know, I am an ambassador. Uh, I am someone who is, uh, who is a representative of the kingdom of God. And uh, but I'm a prisoner, you know. So, and the, and the thing is that you know, you see the perspective. He's saying, okay, I'm a representative of the kingdom of, of the king of the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm in chains, which means that physically, uh, yeah, I am imprisoned. Uh, but then he says that in it, right, even though I am imprisoned, I'm, that in it I may speak the, the speak boldly as I ought to speak. That so that's his desire. Right. Even though I'm in chains, even though I'm in prison, I'm imprisoned. Uh, I know that I'm an I'm an ambassador, that I'm a representative of the king, uh, 
um, and his prayer is that you know pray that I'm uh, even though I'm a prisoner as a prisoner I might make known the gospel you know it's, it's wonderful right uh, the perspective that he has you know as a prisoner he's not saying that okay that I might be set free uh, you know uh, see he's, he's just saying that as a prisoner I want to make known the gospel as a prisoner I want to uh, I want to uh, boldly proclaim the gospel okay so it's amazing and then uh, verses 21 to 24 um, some some greetings and and you know um, instructions so it says but that you may also know my affairs and how I'm doing Tychicus a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord will make all things known to you whom I have sent to you for this very purpose that you may know your our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus in sincerity okay so with that he closes the epistle so he's talking about how he's sending Tychicus um, and who's a faithful minister I was part of uh, Paul's ministry team and he's, he's sending them to meet them and who will explain to them you know, more about uh, how ministry is happening, or how they are all doing uh, and also that he may comfort them, encourage them. Um, then says peace to you and love with faith from God and the Lord and grace be with you. Okay, uh, so it's pretty much like how he you know starts the letter uh, chapter 1 verse 2 we see that grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus so um, he ends that as well ends the letter with that right grace be with you who love our Lord Jesus in sincerity okay so with that we come to the end of Ephesians um, and uh, so yeah, anything uh, any doubts or questions you know, you can look at that or anything that you felt was highlighted to you, that you felt was uh, you know, something that you noticed this time when you were studying, which you've not seen before in Ephesians. Um, oh, anything. Yeah, so you can take some time, maybe put it in the chat. What is it that really made sense for you, you know, as we studied efficiency what is it what is it that really impacted you when you studied efficiency um yeah so each person can just share one thing one thing that you know um that you noticed that was highlighted to you that uh, you know impacted you that you learned newly it could be anything right yeah so kiran kanan prince dev thomas Aaron, what is it that you you, know, you can put it on the chat also, um, so we can, you know, just look at that. Okay, what about you, Kiran? Anything that you learnt that was emphasized from the study on efficiency? Yeah, please go ahead. The righteousness. That's very uh, much. Mm. Um, righteousness, okay, that's right. And the righteousness as something which is like a weapon, which is like a armor, yes. Okay, Kanan? Okay, Aaron says, uh, gifts upon each believer, okay. So, the fact that we, we see that um, in chapter 4, verse 7, that to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Okay. And also specifically, we see the, the fivefold gift, fivefold ministry also given for some, not all, but some, right? Okay. okay. So, Prince, what, um, what do you think? Dave, Thomas. Ephesians. Uh... Yeah. Go ahead, Dave. 
So as we, as we are looking at the the the, the spiritual warfare and the the armor, um, I've just um, not just but it um, most of the armor that we are that that is mentioned by Paul here is mostly it is um, it's a uh, uh, defensive except for the sword. Mm. And the the thing is, um, um, uh, what remained. It reminded me that uh, Jesus has already won the war and he's already victorious mm. and he's given us the now now we are to defend what Jesus has uh, done on the cross what he has done for 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 each one of us now it's our duty to 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 defend that uh, we, we since Jesus has already won the war won the and he's already victorious and he's given mm. us that victory and now it's our time to maintain that yeah yeah so yeah it's true that we are fighting from a, the battle is from a place of victory it's a battle is to uh, stand our ground uh, because you know that's what he says right uh, having verse 13 if you see therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand so yes um yes a, a lot of it is defensive but also you know, uh, it is to extend the kingdom of God, right? So it's, it is to make inroads into, um, like, maybe the territory of the enemy, right? So uh, we have the sword, we have the uh, even the gospel of peace, which is, uh, which is, which in a way can be both defensive as well as offensive, right? You're making progress, you're moving forward, and... Uh, like we saw, the shoes of the Roman soldier uh, can be offensive. It protects the feet of the soldier, but also it can inflict right, uh, damage. So, yeah, so we have most of it, which is, um, you know, defensive, but it also helps us to move into the offensive. Like we saw, um, you know, the breastplate of righteousness. It gives us the confidence to go forward, uh, maybe to wield the sword of the spirit, to use the sword of the spirit. And also, like we saw, you know, the prayer itself, like a spear, you know, there's no distance in the in the spiritual realm. So we, we are in one place and we are praying for the needs of, uh, you know, fellow believers or the church in, in, a, in another place, which is, you know, physically, which is far away. But um, it's like a spear that is thrown, which um, uh, destroys, you know, the intimidation of the enemy, which is over there in that place far away. So you see that it is, you know, it helps in the offensive as well. And we do it um, being strong in all this, you know, carrying all this um, and walking in all this. Okay. Um, okay, Kanan, our position in Christ, yes, um, that is true. Uh, who we are in Christ, our identity, our position in Christ is something that, again, you know, over and above comes comes through in this episode um yeah so to be strong in that right um right prince uh, you must know the will of god okay ephesians 5 17 um yeah understand what the will of the lord is and find out what is acceptable and live according to it yes yeah. So this is these are some things that um, you know that, that come through that, that that God wants us to you know not be passive uh, you know when it comes to um, when it comes to our Christian walk right not to be passive not to be uh, in the sense not to just float <laughs> along but but to live with intention right intentionally and uh, which means to find out you know to engage with God to find out um, uh, you know and to expectantly uh, wait on him to reveal uh, and what he wants done and then uh, obediently carrying that out obeying that you know carrying out orders or carrying out his instruction okay so we see all these um, in Ephesians so we'll move on to Philippians right uh, today let's uh, let me just share the notes so Philippians um, Um, I think I've not put it on the classwork 
uh, on the stream yet, right? So I'll I'll put it after the class, after today's class. Okay. So Philippians. Um, so we see that um, you know it's 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 a very uh, interesting personal letter. Um, it's divided into four chapters. Um, we see that um, Timothy is also with uh, Paul, and uh, uh, though Paul was in prison, uh, Paul uh, writes this from prison, um, and he, you know, some of the things that we we see standing out in this epistle. It's a very personal um, uh, letter, um, and he. He's commending the Philip, uh, the people of Philippi, uh, the church in Philippi, and he thanks them. Um, there is no, um, if you see that there is no, not much of a rebuke or anything um, to the believers. That is, there's a lot of encouragement, um, uh, but there's no rebuke as such. Like you know, right the Colo, right the Galatian church, you know, or oh, foolish Galatians, you know, there's nothing like that. It's a very, it's a very loving, uh, you know, edifying, um, uh, encouraging letter. Um, there is only, I think there was one, yeah, I think it's, it's more of an encouraging thing, right? And he shares a lot of his personal uh, uh, journey as well, like thoughts about his, uh, what he sees. Uh, what he has become, what has happened to him, his perspective about, you know, about the law, about uh, himself, be, uh, you know, as, as he was trained as a Pharisee and and all that. So he, he talks about that, right? So so when we move on to um, uh, see about some of the historical information, we see that, uh, uh, you know, it was a village called uh, Grenades in uh, uh, in, in, in that region of uh, Thrace in Macedonia, and now it's the northeastern part of Greece, uh, a fertile area, and uh, you know surrounded by mountains and hills and so on. Um, so it was it was actually uh, taken over by this King Philip, the father of Alexander, right, who conquered this place, who brought in uh, you know there was silver mines, gold mines, so he was attracted by that, he brought in the culture of Greece into that region, right, into that area. And uh, there's several other, you know, uh, armies which actually fought and uh, later. Um, so the, 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 the city itself became a Roman colony, okay, uh, because of at being conquered by Rome, um, so it had both these cultures there, and it it was considered like a, a prestigious city, you know, Philippi, to live in because uh, uh, okay, there's a map uh, of Philippi. You know, you see that uh, it's close to Thessalonica, right? And uh, you can see the you know Ephes Ephesus. And, and the distance from Ephesus to Philippi. Okay. 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 Some background about the letter. Okay. So in um, in Acts chapter sixteen, Paul talks about uh, he mentions uh, Philippi and uh, something about uh, uh, you know, about his association there. You know, like we see in. Uh, um, in Acts chapter 16 and verse 11, right? If you read, he says, Therefore, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day came to Neapolis. From there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in that city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of this, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed things spoken by Paul. And when she and the household were baptized, she begged us saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded um, us. So this is uh, Lydia, who was a businesswoman 
who dealed in uh, who dealt in sorry uh, textile right and and fine fabric like it's this purple um so she was a seller of that in, in from she was from the city of thyatira okay so is thyatira mentioned thyatira mentioned in the map uh okay philippi thyatira is not there right so um so she so she and her family they accepted the lord then we also see there was uh, another instance uh, incidents that is uh, mentioned there from verse 16 onwards which talks about the uh, the girl who was possessed by an evil spirit and she was uh, it was a spirit of divination right so she would um, uh, she would tell fortune she was a slave girl and she was you know uh, she would uh, she would she was more like a fortune teller she was possessed and uh, because of that there was a lot of money that her owners actually made through her and all cast out the demon and uh, and then they became very angry because now the source of income was gone and then they put uh, paul and um, silas in prison so they are in prison and then we know what happened right they were worshiping god the prison doors there was an earthquake uh the prisons opened and uh, the jailer was uh, you, he had been everyone was hearing them um sing and worship the lord through the night and then the jailer was about to kill himself because uh, you know he thought everyone had escaped but then paul said no we're all here and then his life is transformed he says you know, what must i do to be saved so we see lydia and her family we see the you know philippine jailer and his family come to know the lord and all these things happen and then then um the the authorities um they they came and they were um because they came to know from paul that they were roman citizens now they were even more afraid um and they come they let us uh, they let them go they they released them and they asked them to please you know go out of philippi don't trouble us and they go out of prison and they go to the house of lydia and they encouraged uh, because they are new believers uh, lydia and her family and then from there they leave so uh, so we um, read about this in acts chapter 16 right and uh, we see that uh, from what we read we see that the believers there were poor okay but despite their poverty or lack um lack of you know a lot of riches but despite that they they helped paul in his ministry okay we read that in second corinthians um we we read about that that they were it's in the age area of macedonia and then you know we they really helped in the ministry they sent aid to paul because paul was not um, taking any money from the corinthian church right uh, and because of the kind of situation they they were in and they were all divided and all that so he he actually chose not to take any uh, support from them for the work of ministry but then the believers from philippi even though they were they did not have much they were helping right so you now we we read about that um so they also sent help or sent aid financial aid to the believers in jerusalem uh, because some of them were going through a difficult time and as they were collecting um uh, 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 financial help for the believers in jerusalem they also contributed so they were like uh, they were really partnering in the ministry that paul was doing in his travel so helping him in the ministry uh, and also contributing to so despite all their uh, challenges financially they were uh doing this okay so we see that uh, uh, all uh, we see all that being mentioned so most likely you know this all happened in the second missionary journey so paul also visited uh, philippi again uh, during a third during his third missionary journey from ephesus to corinth um okay so so he might have passed through philippi and and uh, met them okay um okay so about the author we see that uh, paul is definitely the author 
uh, and the style of writing and everything he mentions um, uh, he men- he of course reveals his identity that he is the author right at the beginning and uh, and so we we there's not no one to kind of challenge that authorship right so paul most likely uh, wrote this uh, around ad 60 61 or 62 right approximate time um but definitely it was from a prison because he writes about that as well or from a from a roman prison okay so it's uh, similar to you know the the condition is similar to efficiency because uh, that was also from a prison so this is also from a prison um like if we're going to look at colossians and we see that that is also a prison epistle okay okay so that's the background so paul writing to the philippians um to encourage them to thank them and to remind them uh, about all that is happening in his own life right okay so let's look at chapter 1 um and this is how it starts paul and timothy bond servants of jesus christ to all the saints in christ jesus who are in philippi with the bishops and deacons grace to you and peace from uh, god our father and the lord jesus christ i thank my god upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine making request for you with all joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of jesus christ just as it is right for me to think this of you all because i have you in my heart in as much as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel you are all partakers with me of grace for god is my witness how greatly i long for you all with the affection of jesus christ and this i pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by jesus christ to the glory and praise of god okay so uh, so he just uh, says hello and he says you know Paul and Timothy and uh, we are born servants of Jesus Christ you know that's always the way uh, he referred to most of the times right um, he says i'm a born servant of Christ which means i have surrendered my will uh, to Christ i i uh, to the will of Christ right uh, i'm a slave i'm a born servant whatever he says he's my master whatever he says that is what happens um and it's addressed to the saints it is to all the believers who are in Christ Jesus also uh, um it is to the bishops or the overseers um or people of people who are been appointed um to oversee right uh, the the church or spiritual oversight right so the word uh, bishop refers to that and uh, also uh, deacons or people who are serving are taking care of the uh, the uh, the administrative side of things you know serving in church to take care of uh, um, you know maybe the yeah uh, the the logistic side or administrative side uh, operational side of the church um so th- these are they are the deacons a diaconia as we see in greek so they are the deacons so um so, so to all of them the saints uh, again made up of over uh, people who are overseers and also deacons and who are serving the church okay so grace and peace from god uh, gave grace to you and peace from god of father and the lord jesus christ and he says you know i thank my god upon every remembrance and every time i'm reminded i thank my god i thank my god for you and uh, and he also Uh, you know making uh, uh request for them he prays for them you know he's thanking god um uh, for uh, every time he's reminded every time he's prays every time he's reminded he says um, i i thank god for you all and in every prayer making request for you all with joy okay so uh, you know 
this is the first time he mentions the word joy in this epistle uh, but there are many other places also in the same epistle that he talks about joy and right? about rejoicing and so on so we're going to see that now so what is he uh, thanking them uh, are you making requests for them uh, you know he's thanking god uh, verse 5 says you know for their fellowship for their partnership for um, for their partnership in the gospel right for their fellowship in the gospel in the work of the gospel in the ministry of paul they they partnered quite actively not only in praying but also in giving in supporting uh, his financial needs in supporting the needs of others so he's saying you know for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now okay so which means from the day uh, you know paul met uh, lydia the the uh, the jailer and their families so so these were some of the families that were you know a uh, few families that uh, or the uh, right from the beginning uh, and others who supported the work of ministry paul's ministry okay and uh, so he says um, paul goes on to say i'm confident of this thing that he who began a good work will bring it to completion and that's the that's the one that we um, you know we we started with right? every class uh, we started with this verse and we said okay let's let's pray that over our lives so um so this is what he says that i'm confident of this i'm sure of this one thing because many times we we lose our confidence right or oh, it's taking such a long time or you know halfway through will it really happen and we have all all those kinds of questions but as long as we are yielded right as long as we are giving to uh, our posture our internal posture is to um, to be submitted to him and with the intent of obeying god obeying his voice then we can know for sure that he will the lord will bring that work to completion he'll bring it to maturity he'll bring it to fullness and he says until the day of jesus christ right so either the lord returns it's until then or you know if that day is after our death so whatever it is he will bring it to completion and then it says verse 7 just as it right for me to thank think this of you all because i have you in my heart uh, in as much as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel you are all partakers with me of grace okay so um so he's saying uh, you know i i have you in my heart okay um which means that he's uh, thinking of them he's dear to um, he's dear i mean they are dear to him he's close to their uh, he's close to his heart okay so uh, he has a special uh, concern for them a special love for for these for this church for all these believers okay um so he says in as much as both in my chains and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel so um you know that uh, despite the fact despite the fact that i'm in prison and uh, you know i i have you in my heart you know despite what is happening in the natural uh, what is happening in the environment the physical environment you know i have you in my heart um it says um um in the defense and confirmation of the gospel and is this is the is uh, specifically talking about his work or his ministry okay his defense of the gospel and also the confirmation of the gospel um he says you are all partakers with me of grace that uh, you you are, along with me you are partakers of this um uh, i have you in my heart and you are partakers of this grace okay verse 8 for god is my witness how greatly i long for you with affection you know it's it's been a while since i've seen you so you know i just long to meet you and uh, and uh, i have this so much of affection uh, in my heart for you and uh, and verse 9 he says and this i pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment 
verse 10, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, the glory and praise of God. So he's saying, you know, this is a prayer that he's praying. This is his uh, prayer for them. And he says that may your love abound. Right? May the love of God in your heart, may it abound, which means increase, increase abundantly, increase uh, in a great measure. Okay. Um, so he says that this is my prayer. Okay. Uh, and the, and the, and the word used there is agape for love, uh, which is the God kind of love. And so he's saying this quality of love, which is agape, may it increase, may it, may it abound. Okay, so uh, which means it that word abound means both in terms of quality and also in terms of um, in terms of numerical capacity or quantity, right? So both in terms of quality and quantity, you know, let it increase, let it abound. How? In knowledge and in uh, in discernment, uh, uh, that, is, that is what he says. He says, in, in may it abound in knowledge and, um, and all discernment. Okay. So in the knowledge, um, so it, it, it could mean that, you know, as you receive the knowledge, of God, as you increase in discernment, may this love abound, or may this uh, love that um, that abound, and and at the same time may it in cause an increase in your understanding and also in discernment. You know, whichever way you see it, says you know, let it abound, right, and uh, so that you may come to a place of. Uh, approving the things right, that are because of the knowledge and because of the discernment that you may approve of things that are excellent right so you uh, that you come to a place of uh, saying yes to those things that are uh, excellent that you you may be sincere and you may be without offense right till the end till the day of christ Okay, so you be sincere, you be without offense till the day of Christ and be filled with the fruit of fruits of righteousness. Okay, so be effective, be productive uh, in righteousness, in walking, living righteously, be filled with that which comes by, which comes through Jesus Christ and which causes uh, the glory, God to be glorified and which causes praise to be given to God and people see your lives. Right, that it might increase in fruits of righteousness. Right? We have righteous life, productive life, which brings glory to God. Okay, so so that's the initial greeting and uh, you know his prayer and his heart for the people. Okay, okay, so we'll stop here and we'll continue um, in our next class um, with this. Okay, so thank you. I just wanted one one quick announcement that tomorrow we won't have our IRP class, right? So uh, just continue with the research. We will meet for IRP the following Wednesday. Um, so please focus on uh, just like how we um, uh, discussed last class. You know, just work at it every day, uh, and you know, let there be a lot of improvement, progress in the work, research work. Um, we will meet um, not tomorrow, but the following Wednesday, and then we'll catch up on everyone's work, how things are happening, right? Okay. Thank you. God bless. Bye.